It's the WP Minute. Today we ask the question, who is WordPress for? Coming up next, today's episode is brought to you by WP Engine Decode 2024 Virtual Developer Conference taking place on March 19th and the 21st. The power of the WordPress ecosystem only continues to grow stronger and more flexible through the cutting edge tools designed to make it easier than ever before to go from zero to one concept to design, prototype to product. Join the Decode virtual event again on March 19th and 21st to learn more about the next generation of WordPress, how to level up your development and collaboration workflows, emerging technologies like, of course, AI that are rapidly changing our day to day work and learn more from the WP Engine product innovation announcements that you don't want to miss. Head on over to events.wpengine.com. Register for the Decode 2024 event or click the link in the show notes that you're listening to this very podcast on and register there. They'll get a little bit of credit towards me. Let them know that I sent you that way. Check out the WP Engine Decode 2024 Virtual Developer Conference kicking off March 19th and March 21st. If you've been around WordPress as long as I have, you end up witnessing some of the long-standing debates come full circle again. Like which page builder is best and why isn't WordPress innovating fast enough to keep up with them? While that debate tumbles down the proverbial mountain, gathering debris and growing larger, it is bringing another debate back into focus. Who is WordPress for? For years, WordPress professionals would contest, is WordPress for blogging or is it a complete CMS? Once the app matured with custom post types, custom fields, a robust user management system, we shifted to, is WordPress a CMS or an application framework? Lest we forget, WordPress, the digital experience platform. When Gutenberg launched, a vocal audience railed against a drag-and-drop building experience inside WordPress core. How could you do that to my lean, mean CMS app DXP? Let Wix be Wix. But I'm not hearing those debates anymore. The pushback to having a builder experience is largely gone, and now we're back to debating on the fringes. Should we have more CSS styling options built into the site editor? Should we be able to code templates inside WordPress? It seems like we've all agreed that WordPress has gone beyond the page builder in its most basic understanding and has set its sights squarely on becoming a website builder. WordPress finds itself jockeying in the hierarchy of all these tools like Elementor, Divi, Beaver Builder, Bricks, etc. Beginner, made for millions, intermediate, made for hundreds of thousands, and advanced, made for thousands. The only thing I'm concerned about is my little corner of the WordPress debate. Can WordPress still be the operating system of the web? This concludes today's thought exercise. Let me know who you think WordPress is for by hitting reply or tweeting at me. Now it's time for those important links. There's a few, so let's go ahead and dive in. Namecheap acquires Stencil, a graphic design tool, enhancing their visual suite with innovative products. Some very miscellaneous editor changes coming to WordPress 6.5. Dion Hulse introduced a track ticket for the concept of limiting readme text to 2,500 words for WordPress.org themes and plugins. The fi- uh, quote, final 0.2% of plugins are those who I would call out for being in blatant violation of the guideline. In one case, the README is over 260 kilobytes, amounting to over 26,000 individual words, end quote. Katie Keith wrote up a post WordCamp Asia thread highlighting her take on sponsoring and traveling to the event. Matt Mullenweg will deliver the 2024 state of the word from Tokyo, Japan. In a near 3,000-word epic, WP Tavern hopeful Brian Cords shares how Automatic is reinvesting back into developers. Studio was an Easter egg in that article. Check the links for more details. There's a thing called Scale Consortium. Quote, each agency is represented by their CEO, along with time and resources committed, made up of the specialist staff depending on the needs of the consortium. End quote. Jeff Chandler is employed again. In the event the cabin experiences a drop in pressure, there's always open source, says Leslie Sim. Yonit Niao, founder of Theme Isle and Finn Masters, shares how small publishers are feeling the pressure from Google. If you are publishing and looking for more views to your content through SERPs, definitely check out this eye-opening article. Eric Karkovac writes why keeping up with Gutenberg is difficult for developers. 
I interview founder, the founder of Cadence to talk about their implementation of AI in the theme. In the new video this week, here's how I built a blank landing page template in the 2024 theme. That's it for today's episode. Get the weekly newsletter at thewpminute.com slash subscribe. Want to support the show and join a Slack group filled with WordPress professionals like you? Talk about the news, share your WordPress business content, and network with others. Head to thewpminute.com slash support and get access to our group. Support the show for as little as $5 or more if you feel we provided more value. Thanks to our pillar sponsors, Pressable, Bluehost, and Omnisend. Thanks to our Foundation Plus sponsors, WP World, Image SEO, and Hostinger. Thanks to all of our annual supporting members and you, the listener. Without your support, the WP Minute wouldn't be possible. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.